grew up hearing this phrase, sportsman spirit. Now, sportsman spirit stems from the fact that sports is generally considered an equalizer of sorts, something that doesn't really take race, gender, caste, or skin color into account. In fact, it focuses on your talent, your skills, strength, and above all, meritocracy, where your performance in the sporting field is more important and more relevant than anything else. Now, I grew up in the same context with five boys, all cousins. I got bullied. And because I used to spend so much time with them, by default, I started playing sports with them. Predominantly cricket, because that is the biggest sport in Pakistan. But I was compelled to learn and to face challenges just by being amongst five boys. Initially, it didn't really bode well with me. But as I started playing it and watching it and studying it, I started really enjoying it. And soon, this became my passion. Yeah, sports became my passion. You cannot imagine how disappointed Desi parents would be when they find out that their child is skipping an exam to follow an event. The World Cup was on at that particular time. And I made my choices quite wisely because I decided to watch that and skip my exam. That is how passionate I became as I was growing up. I decided to even save money during the 2009 World T20. I was obviously a student at that point of time. And I decided to go and watch all the games. Rest assured, I was broke by the end. I had absolutely no money, but it was well worth it. I was watching and being a part of something that I absolutely loved. So when I graduated from England, you know, I looked up various opportunities and I was in that limbo phase where a lot of you must be at some point in your life where you just didn't know what to do. As a stopgap solution, I decided that I want to do a corporate job, which was something that I did for a year. But I soon realized that I'm not cut out for this. My passion was still sports. But I did that corporate job and there I had my own share of challenges. I faced a racist boss. I was literally the only brown girl in that entire department. And he used to pick on me on every little occasion. Eventually I quit the job and I had to do some soul searching and really understand what is my true calling? I decided that, you know, I will pursue my passion and I will look for opportunities in the sporting world because the sporting world should be the torchbearer of sportsmanship, free of racism, free of prejudices. But I was quite wrong. In 2015, I was given the opportunity to audition for a leading news channel within Pakistan. If I'm totally honest, I did not want to go. I had no formal media training. I had no idea how to face a camera. My family had no relevance to the media. But because it was my passion, talking about sports, watching sports, my parents really pushed me into giving it a go. So I ended up, you know, nonchalantly turning up at the door and I had an interviewer there who was sitting with a smirk on his face and the first question as I sat down I still vividly remember he asked me reverse swing kya hoti? I had a smile on my face because I knew what context he's asking me in it was said in almost the most condescending way possible I answered politely. He was half impressed, so to speak. And he decided based on those five minutes that he will give me another opportunity. And that is how my journey started. Which is why there are certain rules of life that I swear by. 
The number one is never stop dreaming even if the world makes fun of you. While getting into it, I really had no mentors to look up to. I was not a TV buff. I didn't see a lot of shows. I was just following my dream and my passion. When I did enter this field, there were a lot of people who made a lot of fun of me because they believed that a woman cannot be talking about sports. She cannot be playing sports. She has no business there. This was just the beginning of many challenges that I faced. It wasn't only about changing perceptions and the mentality that is out there with our people. It was also about facing personal challenges on my front. Remember, I didn't have any formal training in the field of sports. And I really wanted to make a name for myself and excel in it. Because once I started, I realized that this is my true calling. This is what I should be doing. It was then when I really discovered a major issue, a personal disability. So I'm deaf from my left ear. And while doing a show, your ears are the most important thing that keep you facilitate and manage a show. I had my earpiece in one ear listening to the director and supposedly your other ear is to be used to hear all the guests that are sitting around you. The moment I started getting training, I had a feeling that this was something that I wouldn't be able to do or manage. It was about multitasking. It was about using both your senses. It was about being present. Because remember, there are no errors on live TV. There's no room for any errors at that particular time. You get exposed very easily. So I have to say that I broke down that day when I realized that I have this problem. I never thought that I would find myself in that place. But I broke down and I still remember calling up my mother and saying, I don't think I can do this job because uh, I've got this issue. I had to calm down and remember, you should never stop trying even when it seems Herculean. I was so determined and focused. I continued to train. I continued to master my skills. And guess what? I somewhat managed to lip read as well. What worked for me was my knowledge and research about my subject. The rest was all improvisation. The initial reaction when I was doing this was rather mixed. A lot of people took attention to what I was doing. They were pointing out the fact that here is a lady who knows what she's talking about. But when you start becoming successful, or when you start getting recognition, the flip side is that there are a lot of people that will envy your work and will be jealous of you. That happens in every field that you walk into. And it happened with me as well. I had fellow journalists from my same industry putting allegations on me for imitating their content, for being there due to various reasons. I soon learned how to develop a thick skin. I realized that I need to keep my focus and I need to stay even more ambitious to be where I am. Focus is the one thing that kept me going, even in times of adversity. There was also a time, by the way, when some of the cricketing legends that I looked up to refused to give me an interview due to my gender. That has happened. I was heartbroken because as a child, these were the heroes that I looked up to. And by the way, after a couple of years, the two gentlemen who did refuse to give me an interview willingly gave me an interview afterwards. That was the irony of it all. Because by that time, I had really cemented my place in the industry. But it does make you think and reflect upon these things because anyone who's starting out would face all these issues. Like I said, 
The one thing that stood out was my passion for the job. And that is what kept on giving me opportunities after one after another. I think the world here was just not prepared. They were just not used to seeing a woman taking lead in her field, which was normally guarded by men for so many years. Another rule that I live by is never ever let the critics bother you and allow them to get under your skin because that is something that will happen. As I got lucky and got more opportunities, I got offers to host bigger leagues. I did the PSL, the T10. I covered the Pakistan cricket team all around the world, in Australia, South Africa. I was reporting from there. And I kept on giving my best, my 100%, and also getting more opportunities in return. And finally, in 2019, I was handpicked by the International Cricket Council to represent Pakistan at the World Cup. That was certainly the peak of my career because nobody ever from Pakistan had reached that level, certainly not a woman. With the increase of work, my social media following also kept increasing. The increased number of following also resulted in the increased number of harassment and trolling online. I'm sure you've all seen it. What we all go through. It's also called cyberbullying. In 2017, I clearly remember, I went to cover the Champions Trophy. And, you know, as I looked up to certain heroes, um, I decided to take a few pictures with them, a few selfies, which <laughs> then became extremely popular. Um, I took a few pictures with the heroes that I looked up to, Virat Kohli, A.B. de Villiers. And the moment I took a picture with them, they just had a really bad outing in, on the cricket field the next day and got out on a duck. I was termed a panati by the Indian media. For those of you who don't know what it means, it's a curse. I could see so many links saying that I was involved in some kind of a black magic. I was trying to do some kind of a voodoo on the Indian cricket team. And I had to face so much online trolling at that particular point. But I had to remember that this was something which was extremely irrelevant. I internalized all these behaviors, by the way, and I learned to keep myself focused on my professional development and career, despite all the prejudices, despite all the wavering attitudes that I had to face. I had to remember that my work was my priority. Over the past one year, women in sports have gained unprecedented attention. There were 80,000 people watching that Women's T20 World Cup this year at the MCG. Something that we've never seen before. Perhaps the biggest sporting spectacle in the history of the Women's World Cup. It's also indicative of how big the women's game is now becoming. The kind of exposure the girls are getting. And this has also raised awareness about gender parity, equal pay, equal opportunities. Women are now great participants. And it's great to see that leadership roles are being given out to them as well. However, the pandemic of COVID-19 threatens to erase this momentum because the sporting world has been forced to cancel events. The sporting world has been forced to stay indoors, more so for women. Lastly, I think this is something which is very personal to me. It's extremely important to impart your skills and knowledge to the people that you work with. Be generous. Don't be a hoarder. You must give back. We need to be able to be aware of inclusiveness, unbiasedness when it comes to gender. Now, if you look at this industry, we have Hajra Khan in football. We have more women commentators coming into the field, like Sana Meer, Aruj Mumtaz, Marina Iqbal, the list is endless. All around the world, there has been an evolution of inclusion of women in sports. 
So the, the list is endless now. And it is great to see that opportunities are being given and respect is being given to all these women. That is the true sporting spirit and sportsmanship that we talk about. It's based on fair play, it's based on talent and equality. Women need to be equal participants in building their lives back up amidst COVID-19. For women and girls, sports are a powerful tool to challenge their gender stereotypes, to regain ownership of their bodies, to really rebuild their lives after trauma and to find a real sense of meaning and purpose to their life and to be able to express their talent and passion professionally. Because I believe that if there are more women in the field, they will push for equality and meritocracy, ultimately leading to the true embodiment of sportsmanship.